Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm doing an unboxing of mascara makeup. I recently did an overhaul of my current system and have switched all to mascara. I was really curious to give it a try after seeing it pop up on social media. It's a newer uh, system that's been developed by a YouTuber. Her name's Kara and she's a makeup artist and it makes the whole highlighting and contour which has really been a craze uh, recently very easy to do yourself. So, alright, let's just get right into this. First off, the branding is gorgeous. It's very modern and uh, a neat system. These little tins will actually go into a palette, a, a magnetic palette. And there's the highlight color. This is the lip and cheek color. And there's, of course, all different colors. And I wanted to get this one as well, something a little bit more of a pop and then there is an illuminator and this is the contour so the highlighter is lighter than your natural shade the contour is darker than your natural shade and I got two of the highlight colors because I was a little bit unsure about how it would match my skin I thought I could send one back the one that doesn't work so this was really neat gorgeous um, palette here and I got this for eyeshadow you can see that it is made out of foam and then it is covered actually in paper I thought it was probably going to be plastic since you know it's something you reuse so I didn't know how I felt about the paper even though it's really beautiful how it would hold up to the everyday wear and tear um, but the foam I really like because if you should drop your palette especially with the powders inside you don't have to worry about everything breaking to bits so um, anyway, I love the design. Uh, installing the colors into this palette is a little bit tricky and difficult. It's hard not to put your fingers in the tins and put it in, but anyway. All right, so here is the blender, which if you decide to give highlight contour a go, especially with mascara's cream uh, system, I definitely recommend you get the beauty blender. To me, that is where the magic happens, because once you paint everything on, it looks pretty crazy and then uh, the blender just really does blend it in well so and then here are the uh, the vanilla dust setting powder and I think that works pretty well but with this makeup I did find that you have to kind of dust powder throughout the day to keep the shine away so and these are so cute these were the eyeshadow colors you can see they're fairly large and the eyeshadows quite pigmented but working with it like I said is difficult to not drop it or put your finger in it so these are really lovely shades the thoughts behind the brushes were to really minimize the time it takes to put together a really pretty look so most if not all of the brushes by mascara are double-ended and so um, this one has worked really well these bristles are really soft and it blends very nicely and um, but you know I don't know that you couldn't find a brush like that somewhere else the highlight and contour brush however is something you need to mascara and as you'll see here uh, it's double ended as well and that is the contour end at the top and then the highlight end at the bottom and it's been working really well for me and enjoy it's a high quality brush I've enjoyed it a lot So here is the full system of mascara makeup that I'm using. Of course I have mascara, which oddly enough I'm not using mascara brand because they don't make mascara, but um, I'm going to be showing you a tutorial and just to warn you it's really chatty and long, it's my first makeup tutorial. And so if you got the time to hang out with me today, we're going to get right into that. I will have a clean face and have my moisturizer on and let's go ahead and get started. So now that my moisturizer has set in, I'm going to be moving on to applying the foundation. And in my palette, I have it set up a little bit different than what is recommended. I have two foundation here and then a contour in the um, lip and cheek color. They recommend having one foundation or I guess highlight color and then you'll have your illuminizer, excuse me, your illuminizer, which is this but I'll get into why I have two foundations and not having this illuminizer in here uh, next to my foundation 
<laughs> okay, so if you have been interested in highlighting and contour makeup, but it's been overwhelming to you, this is a really simplified system that Kara has put together. And Kara is a YouTuber. She does makeup tutorials. She's a makeup artist. And she put together the system to make highlighting and contour really simplified and easy and anybody can do. So let's just get right into how this is done. So I'm going to start with the contour color, which should be darker than your natural skin tone because it creates shadows. And Kara, when she was putting together this system, she uh, explains that, you know, we take our face, which is multi-dimensional, and this is called 3D makeup, and we make it all, we paint it all just one color. And that's, looks a little unnatural so this is actually supposed to make it look a little more natural and add some more um, just interest to the face so I'm going to take this contour color and I'm going to come up here on the forehead and this is going to look really funny and when I first got this makeup in the mail I was so excited to give it a try so it was around midday and I was like okay I'm gonna go ahead and apply this makeup and when I had come to the point where almost being completed with the highlight and contour, I looked crazy. And my husband came home midday and I looked ridiculous and I didn't want to blend it in. And I'm going to go right underneath my cheek here. I didn't want to blend it in, uh, you know, just because I heard him scurrying, like, you know, downstairs scurrying. <laughs> I heard him downstairs. So I just went down looking like a crazy person and caught him off guard. Okay, and you also go down the neck. And I share with you the makeup tutorial cards that is included with it with your purchase that shows you where to highlight and contour. So basically it's on the forehead, it's under the cheekbones, and you can be uh, as dark or, or light as you want, heavy handed or as light handed as you want. And then it's also recommended that you go down the sides of the nose. So I already have fairly chiseled features, so I didn't really want to put too much highlight and contour. Otherwise, I might look a little bit wicked, and that's not really the look I'm going for. So I've got my contour in place, and I don't know if it's just the lighting that I see here. Maybe it is, or it's not quite even. I'm going to use this mirror here don't think it's quite even on this side. Now Kira in her tutorial about how to highlight and contour, she mentions that you don't want your contour color to be too, uh, what is it, too warm, that you kind of want it to be a little more ashen, not really like a bronzer necessarily, because it can, uh, I think, look a little bit dirty or something. So she mentions ashen, which is a little bit more like a shadow. And so there we have the contour is in place. And then next I like to go in under my eyes. And my husband, he mentioned, why don't you just focus on skincare instead of uh, investing in cosmetics? And I said, wow, that sounds really smart. You know, like something that, yeah, that makes sense. Why not just focus on making my skin nice so I don't need cosmetics? And I took to heart that to a certain degree, but um, honestly, like I've always had a little darkness under my eyes and when I don't wear makeup, people are asking me, do you feel okay? Are you all right? So I think I will uh, always wear some level of makeup, at least some concealer under the eyes so I don't look sick and people wonder if I'm all right. And uh, I always tell him, you know, white girl problems. He's of Indian descent, so he doesn't really worry about that. But so, yeah, so this is the lighter shade. I mentioned I have two um, foundational shades here. So I'm using a, a light, lightest one, and then I'll be using a little bit of a darker one. And I'm just going to be putting it under the eye and on the eyelid because I have some veins uh, that poke through that I want to conceal. And I'm going to do this in sort of a triangle motion here so that it just reflects the light. So that is the lightest shade and this is where it starts to look really funny. And, and then I'm going to get my a little bit more closer to my natural skin tone. And this is kind of a yellowy 
color of foundation and I'm going to be putting it between the brows and across the top of the forehead here so it highlights this area and then I also have veins that like to show on this side of my face so right above the eyebrow and then I'm going to be sweeping up just like that in an L motion okay and then I'm going to be sort of just filling in where I didn't put contour with this shade. Getting the jawbone and in here. So I sort of like to do a dabbing motion as well as sweeping in some areas. It just depends on where I'm going with the foundation. Maybe getting the nose. And I deal with some redness around the nose. And I do feel like this foundation is pretty buildable. Everything that is a part of the mascara collection is pretty pigmented. And so I use, a lot really goes a long way. So I'm gonna go down the bridge of the nose. And I might mix this with a little bit of the lighter and the closer to my natural shade. I'm gonna just put a little bit lighter around the nose. So what I'm going, what I'm showing you is sort of an everyday look, but obviously this is sort of involved f realistically to do for an everyday. So I will do this when I'm going out. I would do this for work, work related events. I would do this for, uh, yeah, just something a little, if I want to be a little bit more dressed up than just hanging out at home or even running errands. So now I have the contour I've got the highlight going on and this still seems a little uneven somehow so let me fill in this side on the left a little bit more okay and so now that I have the highlight and the contour going on and I look ridiculous I'm going to be using the lip and cheek shade and this is in the pink grapefruit which is recommended if you have fair skin so i'm going to be going ahead and dabbing that a little on the cheek and really this a lot goes a long way like i said because it is so pink pigmented and i've done my foundation first it's hard to break old habits um you know if you're used to doing your makeup a certain way every day day after day for years it's kind of hard to do something a little bit different so I think that Kara does her eyes first and recommends that you do that. And I do see the wisdom in that because if you have a little bit of a mess up with your mascara and your um, eyeshadow, it's easy to clean that off and you don't have to wipe off your found, you know, wipe off where you've made a mistake and the foundation I'm sorry, yes, the foundation that you work so hard to create with the highlight and contour and start over with that. So I see the wisdom in that and maybe I can train myself to switch that habit around so that I just get the benefit of that. Okay, so here is all of the, <laughs> the foundation and we are going to go in and blend all of this together. And I had never used a blender before using mascara makeup. So I'm gonna uh, show you how that is done. And this is the Beauty Blender that is by Mascara. And it's recommended that you wet this. So I'm, that's what I'm gonna do is wet it and then get into the blending process. Okay, so now we're just going to get into the blending of this makeup. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So I like to sort of start on my forehead and work it in. And it is amazing how this beauty blender works it all together especially when it's been wet when you wet it and when I first tried this makeup I was just thinking I don't know this is crazy I look ridiculous and it looks you know like I have a mask on <laughs> like the name mascara and I just didn't know if I liked that and the neat thing about mascara makeup is that they do have a satisfaction guarantee. And so you can send it all back and get a refund if you try the system and you think this is just too involved for me or I don't like it. But I have to say, if you've watched any highlighting and contour videos, 
you would see that this is a lot simpler than other systems out there where it's just layer upon layer. Care really tried to make it where instead of creating layer upon layer, you're just um, cutting down on that. So you have two different kinds of foundation. I don't know if that makes sense. But instead of painting your face white or, you know, the lightest color and then going in with the contour, you're just sort of, um, I heard someone else say paint by color. So you're, you're not doing a bunch of layers. It's one layer of all of these different colors instead of layer upon layer, which is nice. If you're really wanting to try highlight and contour, this to me, I think is the simplest system I've seen out there. Of course, you can use different brand of product, but just the principles that is used here, I think is a really neat way to do it. So you see how well this is blending. Look how natural that turned out. Like I said, I was pretty skeptical my first time. It's like, this is ridiculous. And I, I like a little bit of glam. I do when I, when I want to have a bit of glam. But I don't like to look fake or too perfect because it just looks unnatural. And I when I first ordered mascara makeup, I did have the wrong color. Um, and I'll get more into that about picking the right colors and everything. And my husband just told me, like, you know, you look unnatural. And he tends to like a more natural look. Um, so I appreciated his feedback on that because, you know, we see ourselves in a certain sort of lighting and then we go outside and it might not look as good as we thought it did at the bathroom mirror. Okay. All right. So I think that that is pretty well blended and you can just keep dabbing until it gets blended to your satisfaction. So there we go. Um, and as you can see, it's not too much and I know it looked a little bit crazy during the process, but when it's all blended out, it looks pretty natural, I think. And so now that I have the highlight and the contour in place, I am going to be using the Illuminizer, Illuminizer, or the sorry, yeah, Illuminizer. And I'm going to put that in the arches of the eyebrow. And then also at the top of the cheekbone, right here where it will really reflect the light. And then you can also, if you want to, you can put it on the bridge of the nose. You can really put it anywhere you want to highlight. You can even put it here. Because it kind of makes that pop a little bit. And uh, Kara has just a basic highlight and contour outline for you, uh, for any of us who use her products. But you can also look on Pinterest and find highlight and contour according to your face shape if you want to do it according to that. And it might look a little bit different than this chart here or this illustration here. So, but this is a nice and simple way to get started with highlight and contour. And so this is the foundation and now I'm gonna be moving into doing the eyebrows and the eyes. So another thing that is right in step with Kara and the way that she does makeup is she likes a blended eye where the eye sort of blends into the rest of the face and I think the way that I've previously been doing my makeup the eyes are kind of cut out they're very defined from the face and the, the more that I looked at the more blended eye into the face the more that I I liked the look and saw that it was a little bit more natural instead of that sort of your eyes are just sort of cut out. So I'm going to clean off my brush and this is my little Norwex makeup cloth. It gets a lot of use and I'm going to be just removing. I use this brush for um, both my eyebrows and my eyeliner. So I'm just cleaning off from yesterday's eyeliner and I'm going to be using in my quad this sort of a golden shade and then also a little bit of a darker shade and I use that combination for my eyebrows. So I'm going to be going ahead and filling those in a little bit where the eyebrows are a little bit bleached by the sun in some areas. So it's not that I have gaps, it's just that it's not even in color. So just filling that in. 
and I like uh, shadow pretty well because it looks fairly natural. I like for my eyebrows to look pretty um, just natural and I like them to be tamed but not as if I've drawn them on or that I've stenciled them on. And I do like a strong brow. I used to have thinner brows in the early 2000s and then I started moving to a thicker, more natural brow after reading a book by the makeup artist Bobbi Brown and I learned a lot about makeup during that time. And Bobbi Brown, she has her own makeup line. You'll see her counter now at the any sort of department store. But before she still had her own cosmetics, this there was a book she wrote for teens on how to do makeup and that book helped me so much. Okay, this is gonna seem weird, but I'm using the chapstick on my eyebrows instead of any sort of a brow gel. I've used brow gel before, but I find that a chapstick works just as well. I'm fine with that. And I might just put a little here on my lips. So the uh, lip color, is a matte, this one that I'm using by her, the um, pink grapefruit, that's more of a matte color and I like to have a little bit of a moisturizer on top, top of that. Okay, so now that I have that chapstick on my eyebrows, I'm just going to brush them out. And obviously, it's a little bit faster when I'm not explaining the whole process. I can do my face full face like this and I think I think it takes about 15 minutes with the whole blending and uh, technique since I'm still getting that down it does take me a little bit of time okay so now that I have my eyebrows done I'm going to be doing the eyeshadow and the eyeliner so I'll be using this purple here which I think is nice if you have green eyes and so I'll be getting that on my eyeshadow brush here which is an angled brush and I don't know the brand of this brush and I'm going to be doing it really close to the lash line so this is definitely a, a more glamorous look this is a something I wear for a speaking engagement or for um, teaching work that I do consulting and maybe going out, a going out look. If you're interested in seeing my real everyday makeup look, I'll be happy to share that with you too. Okay, make sure that's even. I don't really like on the bottom. I think that's too much. Okay, so now that I have my eyeliner in place, I'm going to be using this pink ish color and I'm going to be kind of coming at the edge and it's interesting that this is a lighter color but it's not a sheerer color it's it's highly pigmented and so if you put it over a darker color it will cover that color okay so I'm just doing that in the crease and I'll also be doing that under the bottom lash line So you see how that's more bl a blended look um, versus before I would have just left the bottom underneath the lashes completely free of any uh, makeup. No eyeliner, no eyeshadow. So now you can see how it blends it in a little bit better. All right, so we're going to be doing this in a sweeping and, a, and it goes in towards the lash line. On the outside you see that it sort of blends all that in and then I'll be doing it underneath okay let's see I think one side's a little bit thin here okay I'm just gonna blend it out a little bit okay Okay. 
All right, so that looks pretty even to me. And that's a very simple, like I said, an everyday look, but not really what I would do every day at home. Everyday going out look. And these brushes by mascara um, have been really great for the highlight and the contour. This is the, the hack brush, which I showed you before. And so, and it's been holding up really well. I do think though, one thing about the system that is a little bit scary is the thought of bacteria because you use the brush, you apply it to your face and it goes right back in your palette. And so that made me think that this was going to cause breakouts. And I had, I did have a couple of breakouts early on using the makeup, but as you can see, I don't really have too many. I had one here on the chin, but beyond that, it really hasn't caused much of breakouts. And I do think cleaning your brushes can also really prevent any sort of bacteria going into your makeup and uh, cut down on any sort of breakouts. And then the double ended brush for your eyes has been really nice. And I never ha really invested in eye brushes before. I guess I just thought, I'll just use whatever and that's fine. I mean, you can even use your finger to apply eyeshadow and it usually turns out pretty well. So it's been nice to have a nice brush and I do like the double ended feature that makes it a lot quicker. Okay, now that I have the eyeshadow in place, I'm going to be using this mascara and this is by Estee Lauder. And it's been pretty nice uh, mascara. I one thing I don't like about mascara, a new mascara tube, is I think it comes out too heavy in the beginning. I really like it when it's been used for a while and it's a little bit lighter. So right now I think this is coming out a little too heavy and I don't like how heavy it is. But I think as I use it and it gets less on the brush, I like it a lot more. So this is supposed to be a lengthening and adding a volume on the lashes. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a wiggle back and forth as well as a twist. So it's a twist and a wiggle to try to get even coating and separation of the lashes. Oh, I've got some in the eye. Let's see if I can get that out. Ah, see, like I said, quite a mess. It's really, I really like having a cloth on hand to take care of any kind of messes. Okay, so there is mascara in my eye. I've never really done that that heavy before. So, my eye's sort of watering to get to flush that out. <laughs> so you might see some redness starting to develop on that side. All right, we're just gonna move on and let this sort of flush itself out. <laughs> okay, now on the other side. See? All right, now that I've got the top lashes done, I'll go in and do the bottom lashes. All right, now that I have my makeup all in place, I am going to set it with some powder. And I use, this might sound funny, but I use my hack brush, the end that is for the contour. I'm going to be using that to apply powder. So, but before I do, I don't want it to be darkened. So I'm going to just use this brush on my Norwex cloth and it does pretty good at extracting and removing any sort of makeup from the brush because it is a super microfiber. And I did do a Norwex haul and review, and I'll have that up in the cards you can click on if you want to sort of check that out. This is a makeup remover cloth, and I have used it to remove makeup from my face. I do, um, I have reverted back to using a cream cleanser, but I do use this after the cream cleanser just to remove anything else. And I use it also with applying makeup to take makeup off of brushes, since I do use brushes, the same brush for different things. 
So um, I'll be using this powder. I wish I had this powder in a nice palette like the others, but I don't have enough space in my palette. It's really a pain to use them in these containers. So I'm going to be just applying this to the nose and out and also to the forehead and under the nose and the chin. And I think the powder works pretty well. I do. Now, uh, one thing I have to say about this makeup is that midday, you do need a touch up, or at least I do with my how my skin is. You really did need a touch up. And I, I didn't really like how this looked later in the day. I think it looks really great right now. Um, at least, yeah. I really like how it's come together. But later on in the day, it just, I don't know, not look as nice and fresh as it does when you first put it on. And so I did later invest in the Stay Spray that um, helps set your makeup. And this one has SPF, which I think it's really great to protect your skin from the sun. And this has worked well. You can also use this spray as a primer before you make, put your makeup on, especially if you have oily skin. So this one I'm using just after my makeup. Um, I have used it to set before in, in when it was a little bit warmer outside, but now I don't think that's necessary. So I'm going to be applying this in an X motion. And that's really going to set the makeup and help it to last all day. Okay, so this is the completed look. And like I said, I really do like how it comes together and especially now with the setting spray and it keeps this look better and longer. But I also wanna just kinda of share with you the pros and the cons of mascara makeup. The pro is that I think it really does give you a modern look. It makes me feel like I'm ready for the camera. It makes me feel like I'm ready for the stage if I have a an event coming up that I need to be prepared for and I really want to look my best and I, I think it's just a, a look that's very very modern um, as you can see like I said the eyes a little bit more blended in to the rest of the face and I think that uh, it's good for social media if you're trying to build a platform I think you're just ready for the camera ready for the stage in this makeup I think the uh, other thing that is great about it is that it can give you a real useful appearance, especially like the lip color. Uh, the pink grapefruit, I think looks very happy and pretty and useful. Of course, there's different colors of make of um, the lip and cheek color that you can choose from. So that's a little bit more muted and natural or just whatever your style is. So like I said, um, I just like that it's modern. I like that it's pretty. I think that it's also a very womanly look because you really have these defined cheekbones here that pop out which I think look very womanly. And so uh, those are the pros and it's pretty easy also to apply as you've seen. It's a little bit of a learning curve at the beginning but once you get that down it's fairly easy to, to put it on. Like I said I can do this in 15 minutes and I think it will get even easier as I get more confident with all of the tools and the techniques. Now on the flip side, the things that I didn't really care about with this makeup, um, from the beginning part, the ordering stage of getting the makeup, it is hard to get a true color match through the way that that is done. And the way that it is done and the way that you buy mascara makeup is through a consultant and a representative. And so you uh, basically you find someone who sells mascara makeup and I found mine online and I use mascara beauty girl and I'll have her information linked below and the the mascara beauty girl team they're really awesome and they helped me through the whole process of getting the right color because we had a little bit of mix up in the beginning of finding the right shade I think it's because it's hard to tell through a picture uh, what your true color is and so um, when I first got my color match it was too dark for me so I ended up having to exchange it for a lighter color and like I said mascara beauty girl was really awesome in helping me remedy that and so I was able to get the correct color so that's the uh, challenge with mascara makeup is that your 
ordering, um, a lot of times you're ordering through an online uh, connection representative through an online platform and it's really, I think it's hard to get a true match through that way. So I think if you can find a local artist who can color match you in person, that would be ideal. If you can't, then you might be taking a little bit of a chance, but at least you can do returns and get a refund or you can do an exchange. They're really good about that with mascara and, and getting that fixed. But of course that can set you back when you're really excited and you get your makeup and it's the wrong color, then you have to go through the whole process of the exchange. And so that, that can be a little bit annoying, but at least you know, you can get your money back and get the right color. So that is a con, is trying to get the right match uh, through online, which if you use a local consultant, that's not a problem. And that's the major, the one major drawback for me. The other thing is that later in the day, it doesn't look as nice. But if you have the setting spray and you keep powder handy, I think that won't be a problem either because I've worked through that. So all in all, I like the system. I think it's nice and easy and uh, it gives you a really modern, pretty finish. Well friends, I hope you enjoyed joining me for this unboxing and tutorial and review of mascara makeup. I look forward to seeing you in my upcoming videos. If you're not a subscriber friend, I would love to have you a part of Lovely Things with Abby, where I just share with you some lifestyle videos uh, to do with style. And this is my first makeup <laughs> video. I wasn't really planning on doing many makeup review videos or tutorials, but if you like this and you'd like to see more makeup um, tutorials or even just more lifestyle videos, I would appreciate an encouraging thumbs up just to let me know that you enjoyed this and you'd like to see more like this. And then yes, if you're not a subscriber, I'd love to have you a part of my subscriber friends and family. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care.